Hey guys, CJ here. So Thermaltake just dropped their latest creation, the Series 300 mid-tower PC case, which I just bought on Amazon for $99 US. It's kind of like the little brother to the Series 500, trading off a bit of size and some features for a sleeker form factor. And I've got to say, this case can pretty much accommodate any system build you have in mind. However, it's particularly optimized for a super niche build that only a handful of you guys might ever consider crafting. Let's check it out. The Thermal Take Series 300 measures 463 millimeters long by 245 millimeters wide by 470 millimeters tall. The case is compatible with mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and ETX motherboards and can accommodate CPU tower coolers up to 185 millimeters. Graphics card can be up to 340 millimeters long with a radiator installed or up to 370 millimeters without a radiator. The case can accommodate an ATX power supply up to 220 millimeters long the Series 300 comes with two CT140 ARGB sync fans at the front for intake and a single CT140 installed at the rear for exhaust. In addition, the case can accommodate three 120mm or two 140mm fans at the front and top and one fan at the rear of either 120 or 140 millimeters. Additionally, there's a space at the bottom of the case for a single 120 or 140 mil fan. Radiator or AIO support includes up to 360 millimeter front mounted, up to a 280 millimeter top mounted, and a 140 millimeter rear mounted. There's a removable dust filter at the top front, bottom, left, and right side of the chassis. There's also a rotatable PCIe slot tray for either standard horizontal graphics card mounting or vertical graphics card mounting with the assistance of a riser cable. There's a removable mounting tray behind the right panel for one 3.5 inch hard drive or two 2.5 inch SSDs, as well as several millimeters of space for cable management with included Velcro straps and plenty of tie down points. The front IO includes two USB 3 ports, one 10 gigabit type C port, headphone and mic ports, and power and reset buttons. The left side features a four millimeter tempered glass panel and the front panel is perforated for optimal airflow. Now that we know the specifications and features of the Series 300, let's take a moment to examine the contrast between the Series 300 and the Series 500. The first difference that leaps out is the overall size, with the Series 300 being 11 liters smaller than the Series 500 in total volume. However, while the 500 boasts a larger footprint with an additional 2 inches in length and width, both cases maintain the same height. The size difference isn't merely about desk space. It also implies that the smaller sibling has less room for fans, shipping with one fewer 140 millimeter fans in the front. The 300 also lacks the capacity to accommodate three 140 millimeter fans or a 360 millimeter radiator up top, unlike its larger counterpart, the 500. Another notable distinction lies in the maximum graphics card length. The Series 500 can house a graphics card up to 425 millimeters, which is 55 millimeters longer than what the Series 300 can accommodate. However, this isn't a significant issue as the longest graphics card currently available, ranging between 350 to 360 millimeters, will comfortably fit in the Series 300, the only exception would be if you're using a front mounted AIO, which would reduce the maximum length to the 340 millimeters. Speaking of graphics card, the Series 300 doesn't come with a support bracket like the 500 does. So if you're using a larger card like my test card, you'll need a support bracket to prevent sagging. Lastly, there are a few other subtle differences that add to the unique character of each model. These include the left TG, front and top panel attachment methods and the location of the front IO. All right, let's dive into my build notes. I gotta say, I had virtually no hiccups while installing my test system, but there are a few noteworthy observations. First and foremost, while the top of the case does accommodate three 120 millimeter fans, you'll need to swap out the rear fan with a 120 millimeter one as the stock 140 millimeter fan tends to obstruct that. Now, installing a front AIO can be a bit of a challenge. The fans need to be positioned in the front of the radiator 
which is typically standard practice, but the non-removable mounting bracket can make aligning the fans with the radiator a bit of a tedious task while trying to screw them in from the front of the case. But here's a pro tip for you. Use a small piece of double-sided mounting tape to align and secure the fans to the radiator. This will make the mounting process a breeze. Aside from these minor points, everything went together smoothly. I installed the standard ATX motherboard and found ample pass-through space at the bottom of the case, making the cinch to connect all the front panel I.O. The top of the case offers sufficient depth, ensuring that top-mounted AIOs won't interfere with any RAM. Plus, there's clearance for VRM heat sinks up to about 68 millimeters tall. Another thing to bear in mind is while the rear PCIe bracket does rotate, and standoffs are provided for vertical graphics card mounting, the PCIe riser cable is not included. Also, there's not enough room to vertically mount a card using a tower air cooler, so a low profile cooler or AIO water block will need to be under 85 millimeters tall. And for those of you planning to horizontally mount a thick 3.5 to four slot graphics card, or perhaps a second card in a lower PCIe slot, the fully perforated PSU shroud and filtered intakes on the bottom left and right of the case should provide excellent airflow. This is particularly true if you add that bottom fan. Cable management was a dream requiring just the provided straps and a few zip ties. I was particularly fond of the clips in the front of the case, which allowed me to neatly route the fan cables behind the front panel and out of sight. I also appreciate the grommeted pass-throughs, which are becoming increasingly rare in the sub $100 case, even if they are black and white case. With my test system set up, I took the Series 300 through its paces, focusing on thermal performance. Given the design's emphasis on airflow, it didn't surprise me that the Series 300 offered some of the best thermal performance of any case I've tested to date. When compared to an open test bench, the CPU temperatures remained exactly the same within the case. The GPU temperatures only increased by a single degree, and the motherboard temperatures actually fell by two degrees Celsius. The case's large open perforations on the front panel coupled with the two 140 millimeter stock fans provided more than adequate airflow to keep our internal components cool. It's worth noting that the fine mesh filters strategically located at nearly every intake point didn't noticeably impede airflow. These filters should play a significant role in reducing dust accumulation over time, striking good balance between maintaining airflow and cleanliness. The 140 millimeter fans also produce less noise with a less high pitched sound profile. Overall, I believe this is an excellent case for any custom built PC you have in mind from entry level to high end. With a price tag of just $99, it represents a great overall value. However, where this case truly stands out among mid tower cases is its compatibility with an E-ATX motherboards up to 330 millimeters wide. Many mid-tower cases advertise E-ATX compatibility, yet while they may accommodate most boards, larger ones often cover the cable pass-throughs, creating a need for some makeshift solutions for cable routing. In contrast, a 330 millimeter motherboard will indeed cover the grommeted pass-throughs in this case, but Thermaltake has smartly tackled this issue. They provided a second set of pass-throughs further in the front of the case, and the front fans are flush with the front of the case so they won't interfere with these pass-throughs. This design enables the installation of an EATX board without any cable management problems. Now, it's true, there are only a limited number of mainstream EATX motherboards out there, and they usually come at a steep price of several hundred dollars, so that type of gaming PC build is uncommon. However, while I was examining this case and figuring out what could and couldn't fit in here, my less conventional mindset immediately considered the possibility of integrating a dual socketed Xeon board and building a desktop server. There are limitations to that, of course, the lack of storage space being a major one. I understand that most builders are transitioning from SATA storage to all M.2 storage. However, I would have liked to have seen some additional storage options. There's definitely room for a drive caddy under the shroud and space to mount drives on the back of the motherboard tray. While the lack of storage does limit the feasibility of a storage server, I'm definitely considering building a Proxmox or VMware home lab virtualization server in the Series 300. 
Two other things I need to mention, regardless of the type of system you're building, despite the full name of the case being Series 300 TG ARGB, only the two front fans are ARGB, the rear fan is not. I would have liked to seen consistency there, and as I'm sure most other reviewers will be focusing on with this case, is the three and a half inch LCD display available with the case, which is optional and costs $99, or just as much as this entire case cost, which is a horrible price for a tiny display and completely destroys the value proposition of the Series 300, but it's very easy to install, just two screws and a single USB cable, and it runs on Thermaltake's proprietary software, so you can always make the case for paying for convenience and simplicity there. Well guys, to sum things up, the Thermaltake Series 300 offers a lot of versatility. The good overall value, solid build quality, and well thought out design makes it an excellent choice for a variety of custom built PCs. It performs admirably in the thermal department, and while it doesn't come with some of the added frills of its big brother, the Series 500, its size and compatibility with larger motherboards and some of the biggest graphics cards available give it an edge over other mid-tower cases. If you're like me and like to think outside the box when it comes to your builds, you'll appreciate the unique potential this case offers. It has its limitations, especially if you're considering a more unconventional build like a desktop server, but I generally believe it punches well above its weight class for its price point. And that's it for this review, guys. As always, don't forget to give this video a like if you found it useful and hit the subscribe button for more in-depth tech reviews. And hey, drop a comment below and let me know what you think about the Series 300. Are you considering it for your next build? I'd love to hear from you, man. I'll catch you in the next one.